She's is she not at school? No. Okay, here we go. Where is it? What the heck? Is that a chocolate donut? Ew. Yeah, Toby's just like food. <laughs> Me? Hey, don't blame it on someone who didn't even. All right, so we're going to find perimeter and area on a coordinate plane. So with coordinates. Okay, so I know you know how to find the perimeter of something. Do you want to pick that up? Yes. And I know you know how to find the area of some shapes. So, but it's going to take a little bit of extra work finding it on a coordinate plane because we have to calculate distance, probably using the distance formula or Pythagorean theorem or things like that. Um, but it's not going to be too difficult. Let's start with an easy one. So here's example one. Here's my coordinate plane. Here is my rectangle. Okay, so let's say that we know the points and the points are, let's see, two, uh, four, and three, four. And then two, negative two, and three, negative two. So how do you find the perimeter and area of this rectangle? Can you guys count it out? And I didn't I purposely didn't put the little hash marks on there. So you would have to do the math. You would have to figure out the diff distance between this point and this point. So you could count. If it was on a coordinate plane, you could just count the squares, right? That's fine. But um, that's not going to teach you this concept. So how do you calculate the distance between this point and this point? Let's do the left side. So how far up is this and how far down is this? So you have to calculate the distance between. How do we do it? Would it be easier if this rectangle was like right here and in the coordinate plane and this was like two, five, and this was two, one? So how far is that distance? Okay. Four. Yeah, four. So how'd you figure that out? Well, it's, well, one plus four is five. Yep. So basically, um, you knew that one plus four is five, but basically five minus one is the distance. So how do you calculate this distance? Four minus negative two. Or if you if you pretended there was hash marks, if it's two four, that means this is up four. And if this is two negative two, that means that's down two. So that's four and that's two, right? Or you could just say this is four minus negative two. So what is it, Kate? Six. Six. So if that's six, this is six. Can you guys calculate this distance? Okay. One. One. It goes from two to three. So this is just your x distance. It goes from two to three. So that's one, one. So let's see. The perimeter is two sixes and two ones. So that's 14 units, right? What about the area? How do you find the area? Yeah. So what's the area? Six, right? Length or base times height, one times six, and you're done. That's pretty simple, right? So what made that nice is calculating the diff distance of a vertical line and a horizontal line is pretty easy. You just either count the squares or you do the math. You do the subtraction, right? Can you guys handle this problem? All right, and again, it'll be easier than this because it'll actually be on a coordinate plane. Unless it just gives you the coordinates, 
But worst case scenario, you can plot the points on your own graph paper and then count the squares, right? But as you're counting, you're like, oh, I could have, I could have just figured this out by just subtracting, okay? So sometimes you have to count it out and do it the hard, long way, and then realize, oh, there's a better way to do this. And if you don't realize it, your brain will, and your brain, that's how we teach our brain to learn shortcuts. We annoy it enough uh, by doing the same thing over and over again, the long way, and then your brain, it gets fed up and says, there's gotta be an easier way, okay? All right, let's try another one. Let's say that we don't have vertical and horizontal lines. Let's say we've got some annoying ones. So here's example two. Here are my coordinates. E is one, three. F is two, zero. G is negative four, negative two. H is negative five, one. So I'm going to graph it, and I am going to do my hash marks. One, three is right there. So there's E. Okay. Guys, make sure you know how to plot points. I noticed on some of your tests that uh, people are not plotting points correctly. Make sure you do that. So two, zero, right two, up zero. So there's F. Negative four, negative two is left four. And then down two, so right there, there's G. And then H is negative five, positive one, right there. So it looks like it is a rectangle. So now we have to calculate the distance of each of these line segments, right? Okay, well, I'm gonna use green because it's kind of see-through. Okay, all right, so that might have confused things, especially for Maddie, she hates green. <laughs> Even though she's wearing green, which is weird, or a type of green, okay? So do you guys see the triangles now? Look at this, this right triangle here. What are the dimensions of that right triangle? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six by two. Um, and then here's a right triangle over here. What are the dimensions of this right triangle? One by three. So it's gonna be the same thing over here. That's one by six and a three by one. That looks messy. But this is gonna help us find these sides. So you can do um, you can do the Pythagorean theorem to find those sides, but that is kind of confusing. You just need to find two sides, right? Because the it is a rectangle. So the opposites are gonna be the same. So let's do it. Let's find the, uh, this third side here. So GF, the distance between G and F is going to be the square root of two squared plus six squared, right? You see how we're getting that? Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared or six squared plus two squared equals C squared, right? So how do you find C? If you have C squared, you square root both sides. So C is the square root of six squared plus two squared. The other way to do this is the distance formula. To find the distance between um, two points, remember it's X1 minus X2 parentheses squared plus Y1 minus Y2 parentheses squared. So in between G and F, you've got the X value for G which is right here. So you can use the distance formula or not G and F between G and F. So it's these two points and these two points. Okay. So you could say 
negative four minus two parentheses squared, and then a negative two minus zero parentheses squared. So that is six squared plus uh, plus two negative two squared. But when you square negative two, you still get positive four, right? So see how you get the same thing. This is the distance formula. So this is, you don't even have to graph it to do that, but it's nice to see the visual, right? But if you're graphing it, you might as well draw your triangles and just use the Pythagorean theorem because that's really what the distance formula is. So this calculates, remember how left or right you go is subtracting the X's and how far up and down you go is subtracting the Y's, that's it. All right, so GF is square root of 36 plus four is 40. So far, so good. Now, there should be an alarm going off in your head when you see square root of 40. What's that alarm telling you? Snooze? What's it telling you? It's kind of like we when you have a fraction that's like six over eight, there's an alarm that goes off in your head. What does that alarm tell you? When you see six eighths as an answer on your test. You guys feel good about six eighths? Reduce it. Reduce it, yes. So same alarm. You can simplify this because I see a perfect square living inside of there. Because 40 is just four times 10, right? Four is a perfect square. So this is square root of four times square root of 10. Square root of four is just two. So that's what GF is. So far, so good. So that means that's what, um, what was that, E? No, E, that's H. HE is the same thing. So GF equals that, which also is what HE equals. Because if they're opposite sides of a rectangle, they're the same length. Okay, can someone else tell me the length of EF? Or which is the same as GH? Can you do that in your head? Radical 10 is right. Yep. Right. So do you see EH here or GH? Do you see the right triangle? So to find the third side, the square, uh, square root of this squared plus this squared. So that's the square root of one squared plus three squared, which is the square root of one plus nine, which is the square root of 10, which also equals GH. Okay, so far so good. You guys see how we got square root of 10? You can also use the distance formula too by calculating the distance between G and H by just plugging those, those X values and Y values into the distance formula. I mean, I'm more of a visual person, so I like to draw my triangle, right triangle and you just use the good old fashioned Pythagorean theorem, but you can do it however you want. So now let's find the perimeter. Perimeter is gonna be easy because we can only uh, add like radicals, right? Well, you've got four right radicals because here's what you got. You got two radical 10 plus another two radical 10 plus just a radical 10 plus another radical 10. So how many radical 10s are there? How many radical 10s? There's four terms, but how many radical tens are there? Well, there's two of them plus two more plus so two more. <laughs> no one knows? I mean, it's six. It's six radical tens. This is kind of like variables, like 2x plus 2x plus x plus x, right? How many radical tens? Because two times radical 10 is just radical 10 plus radical 10. So you, you're, that's, there's six of those. 
Okay. So that's what your perimeter equals. And we're just going to say units. All right. Well, area, what, how do you find the area of a rectangle? Base times height. So what's your base and what's your height, Kate? <laughs> I'm so lost. So sorry, I, I was. I, was, oh, I thought I, you raised your hand. I, I was going to for the bass time okay. because of my song. Sorry, I'm not lost. It's just that music room. It's really distracting me. What? The the the. I know. I know. I know. The bongos or whatever. It is. That's a guitar. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, a I, don't, I don't know how bong goes. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a guitar. <laughs> That's not the kind of guitars I hear. So okay. Kind of... All right. <laughs> okay, so what's the base and the height? It doesn't matter which one's the base and which one's the height. So what do we get for this length? And what do we get for this length? Jelly, do you know? What? Will you guys make up your mind? <laughs> what is it? Is the base six? Uh, no. Where? Wait. No, no, no. So Wait. this is that length there is six, but we want to know the base and the height of this rectangle. Oh, okay. So, so we have already found them. Two, two of two of six. Two of no, just ten. don't listen. Two to radical ten and and, ten and radical ten. Yeah. That is it. Thank you. Thank you. you. Woo. <laughs> okay. So what does this equal? What happens when you multiply radical 10 times radical 10? What happens when you multiply just this part right here? What's radical 10 times radical 10? Yeah. Is it? Is, <laughs> is it? No, I'm wrong. But is it a hundred? It's radical a hundred. So two radical a hundred. So two times radical a hundred. But what's radical a hundred? What's the square root of a hundred? Um, ten. Yeah, don't forget, radical is just a square root. Wait, so it's it's two radical. It's just ten, but so we have the tens. Two times ten, which is twenty. That's so okay. That's okay, good. guys, when you multiply a radical by itself, what happens? You, I'm not gonna say that. I'm sorry. The bot, the, the drums are. What's, what's, <laughs> there's, there's, there's just drums. swearing. Does anyone else hear drums? Yeah, it's the, it's the. Are you bongo? Oh, okay. I did, I didn't. <laughs> Listening to my own music because it just blocks the. What's radical? You the drums, right? Guys. Uh, when you square something, that's the opposite of square rooting, right? So you're canceling it out. What's the square root of elephant times the square root of elephant? Elephant. 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 Okay. So now you could do the math. Square root of 10 times the square root of 10. Well, 10 times 10 is 100. So square root of 100. Well, square root of 100 is just 10. And then you just wasted a few seconds of your life. Not much, but they were worth it because you're teaching your brain, do it the long way. So you have, are forced to learn the shortcut that it just cancels itself out, okay? Everyone see how we got 20? A nice number. How do we get a nice number from all these crazy lengths? Well, um, you did because you had the same kind of radicals being multiplied by each other, so they canceled out, okay? All right, uh, let's move on to example three. Thank you, Tobin. Couldn't have done it without y'all. I appreciate it. I was having a blonde moment for a second. Blonde moment. See, that's I've just figured out that saying. And it's because blondes are known, no offense to any blondes, but they're known for not being the smartest. And I was like, that suits me. <laughs> uh, you should ask my brother if there's any scientific. Uh, See, there's there could probably be. a recessive there is trait. There is a, there's is probably it. a recessive trait. That one blonde woman named Jessica has a really dumb daughter. That sounds and like a blonde she, person. Is that, is, that, is that stereotypical? Is, I, I can't say that. Jessica, Emma, Kate. Hey, oh, no. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> But it's probably a recessive trait. All right, I want to find the area. Just to clarify, Scott. Find area. What's the lesson? 
Um, triangle A, B, C. What's that? What's the lesson? It's still 57. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh. So I want to find the area of triangle A, B, C. So here's the deal. A, and it, and, and it kind of tells you the, I'll just draw it for you. Okay, so we've got a right triangle. I want to find the area of that. <laughs> okay, so I'll tell you the points. Oh, tell me. Let's let's see if you can read it. What is the what are the coordinates of that point there? Tobin. Uh, nope. Oh, That's what you guys need to clean up. You guys need to clean up how to fix, fix that. So what are the coordinates of this point? Three comma one. What are the coordinates of this point? The top one. I could be wrong. Is it, is it, or the top one? Three, three, one, or one, three? One, three. Okay, what about this one? Not one, two. Oh, negative one. Negative one, two. There you go. Okay, so you go left one up two. Remember, left to right first. Don't be like Belle. We talked about that, right? Belle? Like Beauty and the Beast? Beast? Yeah. We said that in sync. Jinx. No. Belle is a poor example for all little girls across the the entire planet. Wait, Bell is a poor example? Yeah, here's why. Falling in love with a monster and then taking him back? No, I've explained this in my other, no. That, she, <laughs> kudos for that, you know? Except that's weird. But, you remember that library scene when she was in the library? Look at all these books! And then she's on the ladder, and she like, whoo, like that. Remember that? Yeah. That was a terrible example for young girls all across the world. No, I always wanted to do that. That is terrible ladder safety. Oh. That is not what that ladder was meant for. It's not a roller coaster, okay? <laughs> it's meant for you to easily transport it, not transport yourself. That's terrible ladder safety. You know what the number one cause of accidents yeah. on a construction site is? Falling off a stinking ladder. It's because of stinking bell. That's it's her fault. Yes. <laughs> well, there was this one movie. It's called The Twelve Dates of Christmas, and it's really sad. And basically, sorry, one second. How long is this story? It's just like a thirty second. It's okay. Like 10 seconds. okay. Uh, anyway, her mom died, <laughs> or his wife died by falling off a ladder. <laughs> There you and go. That's the most wimpiest way to go. It's like imagine yeah. if you like, oh. fell off the ladder. Yeah, no setting up the screen. Was that it? I got on the. Yep, yeah, she watched Beauty and the Beast. This is all the bells. I need to wait. It's like a Netflix. Okay. So, how do we figure out? So, how do you find the area of a triangle again? The area of the triangle was half its base times height. Base times, height, base times height. Okay, now what's the base and what's the height in this triangle? Wherever you want. Well, no, not wherever you want. Technically, the base of the bank is the right triangle, right? So AB would be. Yeah, so AB could be the base or AC could be the base. It's just one of these, one of the sides of the right angle has to be the base and one of them has to be the height, right? Because this is not a base or a height because it's not perpendicular. So height is how it, high it is perpendicularly. So if we're going to say AB times the height, which is AC. So far, so good? So we chose this is the height. It doesn't matter. because Either way, it's the same math. You can choose AC as the base and AB as the height. doesn't matter. But either way, we have to find this distance. So how do you calculate this distance and how do you calculate that distance? See if you can do that on your own, on your paper. Wait, calculate the distance between the two. Um, I haven't done it yet, so I don't, okay. I don't know. Okay. Here, let me do it real quick. I did it a very strange way, which I don't think was proper, but I want to see if it gets the right solution. 
It's not six. Okay. Okay. How do we figure it out? What do we do? You uh the 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 the, the number the negative ones and the threes. You uh -huh. add, it's like four. The distance is is five maybe. So this this from here to here are you talking about? Yeah. Okay, but we don't care about this line. Oh. We just care about this line. So if you want to go from here to here, negative one to positive one. But that's not this distance, right? That's this distance or this distance, right? But the diagonal distance, that's not going to tell you the diagonal distance because that's going to be longer. Right? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. And now I'm confused because I was like, oh, it's four. And it would have been four if it was straight across. Okay, watch, watch. It would have been four if it was straight across like that. Okay. So like the other one, because it was straight across. Yep. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But this one is diagonal. Okay. So how do you figure that out? First one's radical five. Okay, now here's how we got it. You can either draw your triangle up here. So I want to find this. Let's let that be a hypotenuse in a right triangle. Well, here's a right triangle we could draw. What are the dimensions of that? That just goes up one and over two. Right? So how do you find that? So that's going to be the square root of one squared plus two squared, which is the square root of five. You see how we got square root of five? That you're in theorem, or you can use the distance formula. If you plug this in, you go one minus negative one is two. Three minus two is one. So you get two squared plus one squared. So you're calculating how far up you go and how far right you go. All right, what about this? See if you can find the length of that. Don't say it out loud. See if you can find the length of AC. Never mind. I'm not gonna say it. I was thinking if it was straight across, not. Yeah. If you if it was straight across, then it would go from here to here, which is what two units. Or if it was straight down, it would go two units. You still need those units. You still need to know how far that is to be able to calculate the hypotenuse, that diagonal line. That's how you calculate the diagonal line any diagonal line on a coordinate plane. Make it a hypotenuse of a right triangle and then use the Pythagorean theorem. So what triangle can I draw? Explain how to draw this triangle. If this was a hypotenuse in a triangle, how do I draw it? You can draw it two ways, but let's not go inside the triangle that's already there. How do I draw a right triangle with that as the hypotenuse? Tell me how to draw it. Over two, down two. So this is how it would look. Right? What's this length? It goes from one to three. So that's two. And this length goes from y is one to y is three here. So that's also two. So what's the shortcut for that? This is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Two radical two. So this is going to be two radical two. So how do I find the area? Well, plug it in. So area now equals one half radical five radic and then times two radical two. Can I simplify that? Can I clean that up? What cancels? One half times two, that cancels, right? You guys see that? Yes or no? One half and two, they can cancel. Because one half times two is just one. Or if you're multiplying fractions, remember they just cancel. It's nice. So then what are you left with? What are you left with? What's radical five times radical two? Radical 10, not 10, but radical 10. 
That's it, unit squared. Okay. Um, so you guys seem to be struggling with this. So make sure you spend some good time in your homework practicing this. Okay, we got a different answer here. Oh, that's because I wrote the problem down wrong. But that's okay. This will work. Okay. Now, um, for this next example, I'm going to show you on the TV. It is... Uh, Um, it's pretty cool how they do this and because um, you technically you could estimate the area if you said okay this takes up part of that box because you're trying to figure out how many squares can fit in here right well they're all going to be like parts of a square because they're diagonal and weird right but here's a way to do this um, look at the I'm going to Bring up this text here, and then I'll share the screen on Zoom. Nobody cares. <laughs> Are you talking to Mr. Flack? No, what? <laughs> I'm not doing that. He was saying something about um, altitude or latitude. Latitude and longitude earlier. And why is it colder when the latitude? Yeah, he's like, why does it get colder the more you go up in latitude? I think that's what he said. Yeah. I was like, because it's short it's or short. It's, it's yeah. space, right? right? That is it. That's. I don't know. Earth science. Science I'm good at. Um, it's classic. Okay, um, so guys, I'm going to share this with you, Zoomers. Don't ask me why I remember that number exactly. Wait, is it just Tristan on Zoom? Uh, yeah. Can he hear me? Yes. Hi! Sorry, it doesn't need to. Don't know why I remember this. Okay, guys, look at this. Everybody look up here. So this is how we estimate area with coordinates. So you can see... Um, see that shape there? So you can see that there are complete squares in there, right? So your first step is to just get those out of the way. Let's count all the per, uh, complete squares. It looks like there's one, two, three on top, four on the second row, then one, two, three more going down. So what is that? Uh, thir uh, 10. There's 10 full squares that I see. But then I see parts of squares. So what do I do with those parts of squares? Well, you have, oh, that looks like maybe uh, three-fourths of a square. No, you don't have to do that. What you do now is you first count, after you count all the squares that lie completely, that it's 10, then you count all the fragments, and then you basically cut them in half. So estimate the area of the remaining space. One way to do this is look for triangles. Boom, boom, boom. Like the right angle shown there. So we calculated that there are you could do it more exact but what people normally do is they take the partial squares and they average like okay let's say that every part of a square averages to like half of the square so they count the total partial squares and then they cut them in half okay so let's see if i did it that way after your complete squares would be one two three four five six seven so there's 10 plus half of seven, which is 3.5, so 13.5-ish. But see, what they did is they actually, you can actually find the area of that. That's a three by one right triangle. So half of that so it would be one half, or one and a half, okay? You can find the area of a bunch of things, but the other way to do it is to just, um, count your total number of partial squares. Oh, we forgot these. And then cut them in half. Okay, so estimate the remaining area. By looking at the remaining rectangle, which appear to have a height of approximately blah, blah, 
Okay, so that's one way to do it. There is a better way. Okay, so look at this guy. Let's estimate the total area of this. So what do you do first? What do you do first? All the four full squares. Yeah, so how many full squares are in that shape? 14. So I see uh, eight on top and then six in the middle there. So we're just looking at complete squares. Now, how many partial squares do we have? Six. So we have six, like the stuff on the side. There's one, two, three partial squares, one, two, three partial squares. So you have 14 plus half of six, which is three. So you'd end up with seven. Or 14 plus three is 17. So what did they say? Estimate the area of the remaining area. The curved area covers one square unit on either side. I mean, they're, they're just being a little more exact. But the general rule, if you want a quick estimate, is just count them and then divide by two. Okay? Are we good on that? All right, let's move on to the next lesson. We're only, we've only done one lesson. So hang in there. We got one more. Can we do something similar in algebra two? Yep. Yeah. Oh, counting the squares? Yeah. I think so. This sounds right. All right, moving on to lesson 58. So 58, this is the second part of tangents of a circle. Now this is like a nice, this is a nice unit because remember on the last test, your only question was identify the, the tangent of this circle, which I think every one of you did. And then the point of tangency, basically where the tangent line touches the circle. So that was pretty easy. All right, so this is part two of that. So let's start with theorem 58.1 which says if a line is tangent to a circle then the line is perpendicular to the radius so here's a tangent line here's a radius the point of tangency this is what theorem 58 one says so if you have a tangent line the point of tangency to the radius that line segment that's formed is going to be perpendicular to that line of tangency that tangent line okay so if a line is tangent to a circle then the line is perpendicular to a radius drawn to the point of tangent tangency Okay, does that make sense so far? So anytime you have a tangent line to a circle, like if this was a tan, that's terrible. Tangent line, then from the radius to there is gonna be perpendicular. So that's a terrible circle, okay? But it's always gonna be perpendicular. If I drew that nicely, it would be perpendicular. All right, so here's example one. So line, if I say line N is tangent to circle C. So that's how you label a circle. You put a little circle with the center in it and then the letter after it. So circle C. Um, line M passes through passes through C which is the center passes through C uh, lines M and N intersect at point Q 
Okay, so I want to draw a circle C. And then I'm going to draw a line N, which is a tangent line. So far, so good. Now, what does M do? How do you draw a line M? Sorry. Maddie, how do you draw a line M? Line M passes through C, line as M and N intersect at point Q. There is a C. <laughs> um, you draw the line from C to uh, Yep, so that line there, so they intersect at point Q. So there is line M. Okay, so that's it. That's how you would sketch that. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> Uh, what is the point of this lesson? <laughs> okay, so it says to sketch this. They they intersect at point Q. So here's Q. All right, now it doesn't say anything about the point of tangency yet. Oh, okay, so it says it's at point P. That's what the directions say. I'm sorry. All right, so there's the sketch. And then the question says, if CQP is 36, determine PCQ. If measure of angle CQP equals 36 degrees, then what is the measure of PCQ. Okay. All right. Do you see where CQP is? Do you see where that angle is? So draw with your fingers in the air. All right. Good. So it's right here. So this is 36 degrees. So now it asks us to determine the angle PCQ. So draw that in the air. PCQ. Start at P and draw PCQ. Yep, PCQ right there. So they want to know what this is. So how do you determine that? We know that's going to be a right angle. Yeah. Well, this isn't going to be a right angle. This is a right angle. So what's that angle? But you subtract 180 minus 36. Or you need to add it up to 40. Yep. But the simpler way to do it is since this is a right angle, these two have to just add up to 90, right? Because 90 plus another 90 is 180. There's nothing wrong with that. But again, there's a shortcut. Okay, so what is that? 54 degrees? Does that make sense? Again, draw it. Once you draw it, you can kind of see, oh. That's a right angle, so let's see. They have to add up to 180. Okay, got it. All right. Theorem 58.2. 58.2 says, if a line in a plane of a circle is perpendicular to a radius and its endpoint is on the circle, then the line is tangent to the circle. This is the blank of theorem 58.1. Fill in the blank. This is the blank of theorem 58.1. It's the converse. So if line is perpendicular, all right, so if a line in a circle, if a line in the circle is perpendicular to the radius, at its end point on the circle, then it is a tangent line. Then it is tangent to the circle. Okay? So that's the opposite. All right, so let's do some let's do some math here. 
So we just got a few more examples and then we'll call it a day. All right, here's example two. Let's look at example two. So let's draw a circle. Point C. And it looks like we've got a right angle here. This is circle C. And then we've got this guy here. So now that we've got it all labeled, this is why I usually just share the screen and do it on there because it's so much easier. But if measure of angle BEA equals 45 degrees, I want to show that BD is tangent to circle C. Show that BD, line BD, is tangent to circle C. So I want you to explain why, using theorems that we've learned, why BD is tangent to circle C. So here's what we know. Here's what we're given. BEA is 45 degrees. BEA, this is 45 degrees, right up there. Okay? When it equals E E E also down the move into the United States from So the oh I forgot one very important fact is this. This is what's also given. Well it's it's given because those are radi that's that's those are both radii, right? So they're both radiuses. So what do you know about isosceles right triangles? What kind of triangles are an isosceles right triangle? We just learned about them. Well, what does your gut tell you about these two angles? Uh, these are not right angles. This is the only right angle. So what do these angles have to equal? Oh, oh. you subtract 180 from 90 and then divide it by 2, right? Yep, because since this is isosceles, both of these are going to be the same. So now... We have this here. What's 45 plus 45? Yeah, nine, nine, 90. So what happens if this line is perpendicular to the radius? What does that mean? It's isosceles. It's a cube. Isosceles. Isosceles? No, let's think about it first. We're, we just learned this. If the line is perpendicular, what is it? Well, it's a right angle. So it's perpendicular. This line. Now we know that this line is perpendicular to the radius. So this line is a tangent line. Tangent line. Okay. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Next example. One. Uh, let's just do another theorem and then one more example. So here is theorem 58.3. If two tangent lines, if two tangent segments are drawn to a circle from the same exterior point, Is 
same exterior point, so outside of the circle. Then uh, they have the same length. They are congruent. So here's a circle. Here's an exterior point. I draw a tangent line from there, and a tangent segment from there. We can say that according to theorem 58.3, these are the same. Okay. So um, real simple, if you draw two tangent lines, you can only draw two, right? Because it can only touch at one spot. So from any exterior point, you can only draw two segment, two tangent segments. Okay, it doesn't matter where you put the point, you can only draw two segments. These are always going to be the same length. They look like the same length, don't they? Okay. All right, so real quick, let's look at this example. I won't draw it because it's easier not to. <coughs> See it? Yeah. Share it with Tristan. So what's MJ? 17. What's KL? Do we know it's radii or are we assuming? Oh, wait. Are we assuming it's radii or do we know it's radii? Uh, you're assuming it's radii. You don't have to assume. Oh, I Because it says, it says in this figure, JK and JM are tangent to, cir to circle L. And so since we know it's called circle L, then we know that L is the center. So any line drawn from the center to a point on the circle is a radius. So what's the perimeter? The quadrilateral. What's the perimeter? Got it? 17 plus 17. Oh, seven, 14, so that would be 34, and then 8 plus 8 is 16, so 16 plus 34 is 50. Nice. I popped off. Yeah. Good job. I guess that blonde moment's over. That blonde moment is over. It's time for my brunette moment. No. <laughs> All right, so determine the perimeter. Got it. Good, good, good. Okay, we're done. With the thing, Matt? We're done with the thing. I would yes. just like to say thank you to everyone. Thank you for the Academy. Thank you for the casting. Right. Congratulations. See you, Tristan. <laughs> uh